Do you like first person shooters? Do you like real time strategy? Do you like aliens versus predator? Then you might enjoy natural selection too. NS2 is a team based game that combines the FPS and RTS genre. This game was made by the same developers as Subnautica. And actually, they share the same universe, as you'll see the Kara bacteria in both games. You play matches between 20 to 40 minutes, and you can choose between marines or aliens. Both teams will have one commander and 10 players. Marines are really good early game, and have technology like jetpacks and nanotech, while aliens have evolutions and passives, like being able to transform into one of the many life forms that grant different abilities and that play different roles. Both teams start in random but adjacent starting points. The commanders start with 60 resources, aka res. To clarify, res is the player money that you can use to buy stuff. But the players and the commanders have their own res. Marines can expand faster and more loosely around the map with their resource towers, also known as RTs. While the aliens have to run their expansion more slowly through creeping overgrowth with their cis chain. Then on that overgrowth, they can build their RTs and other structures. What's unique about aliens is some structures can move after being built. The power and balance structure is more or less that Marines have an advantage early game and aliens pick up speed and get stronger late game. Remember when I said both team commanders have their own res? That's because they will be spending those on expanding and giving upgrades to their players. While players spend their res getting weapons and tools to defend or attack. Marine players buy weapons, grenades, jetpacks and mecha suits. While aliens get passives like invisibility, more stamina, more speed, more armor, lifesteal and even evolve into stronger life forms. A fast flying bird who supports, an assassin, a tank and a sort of engineer that heals, builds many alien turrets and blocks off areas, aka Little Piggy. It's a really fun game even if the community is pretty small now. Before, there used to be way more players playing at once, but as time went on, the community has gone smaller and smaller. But hey, we still get around 100 to 80 players, so you can always find a server to enjoy the game. Actually, for me, I was really comfortable with Marines at first because of my experience with FPS games, but after a long while, I got bored and got increasingly more curious about the Alien team, even though I played it occasionally, and I got addicted to Aliens. It's really fun just flying around as a, a lurk, because the amount of freedom that gives you just flying around and straving in the air and all that, and then the wall hops and bee hops that you can do with both Skulk and Fade. The Skulk is the alien that you automatically spawn as. He has a low amount of HP, but he's very fast and works really well in big numbers. He's the one that basically can bunny hop and wall hop, and that gains a lot of speed. Skulks do sneak attacks or attack in groups, and they eat the resource towers behind the enemy lines. You'll also frequently see one of them biting the power of their main base, or one of their important structures, like the arms lab, which is where they have their weapons and armor upgrade. And if you don't keep them in check, they can turn the game around. While he is the free basic alien, don't underestimate this little dog, because he will bite your ass when you least expect it. Oh, I almost forgot. The Skulk has an endgame trait upgrade, which allows him the suicide bomb, which, yes, is free. And that doesn't just deal damage to marines, that also deals damage to exos and buildings. So that's crazy. Once Xenocide gets researched, it's usually game over for marines. If you don't really like the frontline fighting or you're not used to the mechanics yet, the Gorge is a really good life form to just hang back and learn. You also get to play way more passively because your main job is to build structures for the aliens. You heal structures as well and you can heal other teammates. So if a Fade or a Lurk comes up to you and they start hitting you, they probably want you to heal them. Because healing a life form that just came out of a fight means that they can go back faster and finish the job. I very much enjoyed Gorge because it brought me back to the sort of tower defense days because you place these obstacles and structures that allow you to defend a certain area or to slow them down. Another trait upgrade that the Gorge gets later on is the Bile Bomb and that is super useful. It's pretty much an AoE ball that explodes and melts away armor from the marines. It's also the number one thing that's most effective against structures. So usually you'll see 
gorges, crawl up in a vent, and just spit bile bombs down on the enemy base. Which <laughs> makes the enemy panic because their entire base is getting damaged at once. And if two or three gorges get together and do a sneaky bile rush, you can probably destroy half of the enemy base in like 10 seconds. It's nuts what you can do with Gorge. He's super useful. If you have two or three Gorges in your team, you are constantly healing the hive that gets damaged, uh, building structures really quickly across the map, and you keep the front line stable because you're the defense line. You're there for if your teammates can no longer hold the line. Fade, by the way, took me a while to learn, but I love him. He's such a fast, crazy assassin. You can get behind enemy lines really quickly and get out after killing one or two people. You have to be careful though, because shotguns absolutely shred, especially lurks and fades. You don't stand a chance. Oh, and skulks, they just get one shot instantly. But actually, fades can tank one shotgun shot straight to the face and live, which is crazy. As a lurk, you don't really go for kills because you're more of a support for your team. Your main bite deals a poison to the marines. So the way you usually want to fight as Lurk is swoop in really quickly for one bite and then fly off really weirdly in a zigzag so they can't really hit you. And your spikes can basically finish them off from afar or annoy them even so that your teammates can come in and deal the finishing blow since they will deal more damage than you. More into mid game and late game, Lurks have this trait upgrade that allows them to launch two different gases. First one is called Spore which is a gas cloud you can send that is poisonous. And the second one is called Umbra. This one is a protective coating because it blocks off some bullets. And if life forms, including you, go through the cloud, it gets applied onto you for a few seconds and it blocks some of the damage or a percentage of the damage, which is really good when you're doing a push somewhere or if you see some of your teammates retreating. Onos I've played the least of because it's sluggish and slow. But if you're defending against a push, you feel powerful. All you need to remember though is you gotta kind of play like a pussy because if you go below half HP, you can easily be chased back to your base and killed. So you need to go back as soon as you're dropping HP so you can heal back and continue to be a bullet sponge basically. Because <laughs> your main job is to halt them, catch them off guard because you can use stomp and stun them. But against stuff like an exo or jetpacks, you'll have more trouble. If an exo gets stuck retreating, you can easily kill him though, if you have the support of your other alien buddies. But yeah, because of the huge risk that comes with going- I mean, I say risk because when you die with your life form, you lose that investment, you lose that res you spent on getting that life form and the upgrades. On marine, it's a little different because Let's say you die with a jetpack, a shotgun, and you had a grenade and a mine. The jetpack disappears, the shotgun drops, and the grenade and mine you bought previously are still with you when you respawn. And the shotgun stays on the floor for like 15 seconds and another marine can pick it up and use it. Or they can also carry it back to base and drop it to you when you respawn. There's a risk overall, transforming into any life form above a gorge, cause like 10 res and then you go to 21 res is for the lurk, 35 is for the fade, 55 for the onos. Not to mention, by the way, you can't forget, you also have the little passives you have to add after, which on skulk is zero, cause you get it for free. On gorge it's one cost, on lurk it's three res, and on fade it's five. And on onos it's eight. But the passives on Onus are bigger. For example, the Carapace, the extra armor, you become chonker. On Marine side, it's a lot easier to recognize things. If you want to be able to repair structures, there's the Welder. On the side, you'll see the weapon and armor upgrades. With the Welder, you can repair both structures and weld other Marines so you can give them armor back. Because when they get bitten off, they lose some of that armor. Usually, the gameplay of Marine goes along the lines of you spawn in, you go to the armory, you get a welder, maybe a grenade or a different weapon if you have enough res. You go through the gate and go back to the fight. You either keep pushing into a high or you want to stop a push that's happening. Or if you want to quickly get a sneaky gate or, or to get a gate in like a weak spot they have so you can rush the hive. Some of my favorite things to do on the marine team is definitely flying around with a jetpack. 
or just sliding into battle with the exo and just shooting everything with the minigun. The railgun's pretty cool too, just harder to use. You have this like UI in front of you and the two miniguns on the side and it's really fucking cool. You have these propellers behind you or whatever, you can like slightly float or do a little sprint, kind of like a dash. While you do feel really powerful with an exo, you need to have at least the support of one person. So they can weld you or help get rid of a skulk that's biting your ankles. Because an exo can get overwhelmed quickly if you're completely alone. Being commander can be quite intimidating at first, but it has the basic RTS stuff. You have a minimap, you have a UI with your options and structures. You can click on structures to start researching or to get upgrades. You can select players and tell them to go to places or to defend certain areas. But I find the most effective thing to do is to bind your commander voice chat so you can talk to your team. That way you can focus on studying the map and how the game is playing out. So you choose which places to go on the map and which upgrades to get. And your players can just do their thing while you keep them on the loop. And even in the middle of the game, both on both teams, you can leave the command chair at any point. Whether to kill an intruder in your base or to actually go and push somewhere or rush the enemy base. And you can return after that. Or just switch with someone else so someone can command in your stead. You can play more aggressively as a commander and have a plan that you want your team to execute. Or you can play more passively, which is you mainly just do upgrades and research and choose the path on where to go. And your players do the rest of the fighting and the zoning. Aliens are terrifying on a base rush though. But to counter that and other pushes, Marines have this thing called a distress beacon. Everyone gets recalled into base and also quickly respawns the ones that were waiting for their respawn timer. And some of you will want to quickly face through the gate to go to the other bases, to the other outposts you have, so you don't lose those. It's really fun overall. You can play a variety of roles and be super useful to your team as long as you always communicate and watch over your team. It's great. I've been heavily addicted to this game these past three months or so, and I can't recommend enough. Play it if you like it. This video took me forever to complete, so if you like what you saw and want to show some love, consider subscribing. I'll be doing more of these. Also, if you want to further support me, I have a throne page, and I accept donations and all that on my Twitch live streams. I don't have YouTube memberships, so it is what it is. See you all either on the next stream or the next video. Take care.